in this video, I'll be showing you how I turn this glass jar into this terrarium. Let's get started. I'm going to start by adding a drainage layer to the glass jar. For this, I'm using leaker. A cheaper alternative is pea gravel, or you could even find some stones from outside. However, I always like to use leaker due to its porous texture. This means each piece will be able to absorb and hold water, and this will result in a greater volume of drainage. Once the layer is in, I use the back of my hand to gently flatten it out to make sure there's no low or high points. For a terrarium this size, roughly an inch of drainage would be more than enough. Next, I take a piece of window screen mesh, place the jar on top, and then cut it to size. This will act as a substrate barrier that will prevent the substrate from getting down into the drainage layer. Now I'm gonna be adding in the soil mix, or commonly known as the substrate. I'll put the mix I use up on screen now. Feel free to have a go at making it yourself. Using the back of my hand, I gently compress it down into place and ensure that it slopes up towards the back. This will help create a good sense of depth. Now it's time for the hardscape. For this, I'm using some pieces of driftwood. As I always say, it's a good idea to take some extra time to work on the hardscape and experiment with multiple different layouts until you find one you're happy with. Here's what I settled with. It's very simple, but once some plants are in, I think it will look really good. Continuing with the hardscape, I then added some rocks. These will help bring some nice contrast to the terrarium. Once again, I took some time to decide on their placement. Here's the final hardscape. It's certainly nothing complex, but I think its simplicity will help it stand out. Time to bring it to life with some moss. In this tub, I have a range of different species that should come together to help create a more natural look inside the terrarium. Let's start with the low growing carpeting moss. These are gonna go at the front. The idea was to have low growing carpeting moss in the foreground and more dense bushy moss in the background. Doing this should help improve the sense of depth and create an overall nicer look inside the terrarium. When planting moss in a terrarium, be sure to gently pat it down onto the substrate. This will help it establish quicker as it's got a base to grow on. Here's the foreground done, time to move on to the background. For this, I have some hypnum moss on the right and some fern moss on the left. I'm starting with the hypnum moss and gently tearing it into smaller chunks and then carefully placing them around the terrarium. Instead of placing one massive clump of a single species, it's a better idea to plant smaller chunks of multiple species. This will help create a more natural look. With all the moss planted, I then went on to add some more details. This came in the form of some acorn caps. I'm keeping the planting in this terrarium very low as it's more focused around the moss, but I decided to add some oak leaf fig climbing up this driftwood and this small peperomia that will go in the background and will hopefully grow within the moss. Now I'm giving the terrarium a light spray down. As I always say, make sure you don't overwater. The substrate should be damp and not wet or soggy. If you're ever in doubt, water less than you think, as it's much better to underwater a terrarium than overwater it. Time for the terrarium cleaners. Of course, I'm talking about springtails. They will take care of any mold or decaying matter inside the terrarium. The moss and plants will provide sufficient oxygen for them to survive, and in turn, they help fertilize the substrate. If you want to learn more about terrarium making, I've just released an ebook that contains everything you need to know. I'll put a link at the top of the description if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed this terrarium build and thanks for watching.